Nikki, it's lovely to see your garden. I've obviously seen ones that you've done for other people and admired them greatly. And then the hunting lodge that you had before was wonderful. Um, so tell me, really, well, to start with, you've seen an awful lot. I, I couldn't believe when you said that when you first flew from Heathrow, there were Nissan huts. That's true. Just they were. There were three Nissan huts in a field. Uh, and looking at you, I can't oh. believe that you're that old, but that, that's pretty that amazing. Old. <laughs> <laughs> that old. It really puts everything in perspective. Yeah. But you've got a very um, youthful way about you, haven't you? And you've obviously done, had a huge experience designing gardens. And it's well, I don't, you're slightly giving me more credit than I do. I've sort of fiddled about, I'm not a great garden designer. I sort of know how I ought to look, and I tell clients it ought to do this, that, and the other. I have designed very minimally how the layout of gods, but I'm no plantsman. I can't say do this, that, and the other. So mm. it's really structural addition, uh, uh, the extension of the house that I do. Yeah, I think people find the structure of the garden the most difficult, to yeah. be honest. I think we all play around with plants, and some much more satisfactorily than others. But people really stumble on getting the bones yeah. right. And that, from your parents' home, which had very strong bones laid out by the Italian gardener. No, uh, it was by Cecil Pinson. Cecil Pinson. He wasn't Italian. Oh, sorry, but he worked in Italy a lot. Well, he worked for, for, for the famous book garden was Itati for Berenson. Yeah. And La Foce for, the, for Aris Arrigo, who yes. was my godmother. And you've always said that when you do a design for a garden, you like the bird's eye view. Yes, to, uh, in, yes, uh, like, like Kipe, or whatever you called, the famous engraver, to the bird's eye view of layouts, of garden layout. And, and I find it impossible to do a layout of a garden without a survey, which yeah. is effectively a bird's eye view. Yeah. Because none of the lines are as you think they are, are they? <laughs> and when you actually see them surveyed accurately, what you think is a rectangle is huge trapezoidal or yeah, whatever. Exactly, and it yeah. changes your whole perspective. Um, and with your little terrace here, um, which is just perfect, isn't it? The orientation, you've got the formality by the house, and then you've got the beautiful view. And a, 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 a thing to terminate the view, the deer terminates the view, and yeah. it stops the eye, and then you go beyond it. Yeah. And that. Clairvoyer, that, is that the word? Uh, ish. It is yeah. ish. I you think, you isn't it? see through the hedge, it would be a clever yes, way, wouldn't it? Yes, if it, but it, you get that when you stand up because the yeah. landscape just goes right on. Yeah. And that is the sort of typical parkland, the wood pastures, isn't yeah. it? With the huge oak trees yeah. or trees and then the great. The cedars. Ce lovely yeah. cedars in yeah. the foreground. So, capability only really oh. use um, cedar of Lebanon, didn't you? <coughs> that well, they was the only they, exotic tree. They must have just come in when he was young, I think. Yeah. When he was starting. And he put them usually near the house. They're yeah, they're wond wonderful, wonderful trees. Um, so when you when you were doing a garden, or when you are helping people with a garden, what are the few of the things that you would like to do? Keep it mainly green and white. <laughs> <laughs> so you like simplicity. Yeah. But I can see. Some I like green and white and pink. Yeah, you know, a few purple, but those colours, pink, pink, purple, mauve. I like. Escape it. Yeah, I don't really like yellow. You don't like yellow? Not that, really. Or orange. Yeah, that's, a, that's come into vogue, hasn't it, in, with, in the last sort of five or ten years, the yeah. orange. Yeah. But before then, it was a very normal Well, people colour. did have hot borders, didn't they? Yes. Doesn't Dix yeah. have a famous hot border? Um, he, he, he's got exotics and things. Like yeah. He replaced, he tore out his rose beds and, yeah. he, and put in his exotics. But yeah, Gertrude Jekyll was hot, which jumps forward, yeah. and then she'd transition back to the blues yeah. in the distance yeah. to make it look much much longer but the use of color whether you're inside your palette of colors inside you would would you be re so restricted to yes I, I tend to use inside off-whites grays mauves but i love brown room brown rooms are wonderful louis, i read the other day that louis the 14th favorite color was brown it's extraordinary isn't it really yeah i love um Pale brown with pale blue. Yeah, I think that's well, a yes. lovely mixture, yeah, isn't yeah. it? Really nice. Um, I didn't know that because brown is so many different things, yeah. isn't it? Whether it's a sort of I love brown brown velvet walls are wonderful. So Oil, oily, greeny brown. What about is it elephant's breast? We always call well, elephant's well, that, breast. My parents the, had elephant's breast. It's a very it's a fertile colour. Yeah. Um, but yeah. would you call that a brown? Well, it is sort of brown, it's what I call grove, grey-brown mauve. Mm. 
it's that sort of not, not an indefinable colour. And when you, you're in the Cotswolds now, when you drive around, a lot of the doors, it's interesting to see how the paintwork has changed because sort of 40 years ago, they'd all be white or off-white, yeah. wouldn't they? Pre, I mean, white, bright white only came in in the 20th century, yeah. isn't it? And, and then now we've all gone to the much more muted tones on the outside. Greedy grey. Yeah, because it makes them recede into the beautiful yeah. stonework. Yeah. And it is so much more attractive, isn't it? Well, it certainly helps... When, when, when they're unit, when it's certainly in a village, but it unifies it. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, but it's nice. We were driving through um, Morton in the Marsh, and you would see one with sort of elephant's breast, one with a yeah. muted grey. Yeah. So they were all of that ilk, but yeah. they weren't identical. But it pulled them but together. The old they had bright, some bright red front doors, didn't they? But the worst colour, wine, claret is my worst colour. What about aubergine? Because aubergine well, is trending big now. Well, it's quite good if it's dark enough. Yeah. That's been almost. Uh, yes, I mean, the, the real aubergine. Yeah. I mean, not, not uh, dark as possible. Because there's 100 miles from Clarence, strangely, yeah. isn't yeah, it? Uh, I yeah. think. Yeah. And, and colour is obviously a, a thing that affects your mood, it affects the whole look. So it's a big thing in your life. And I notice with your clothes and your dresses, <coughs> you're very tuned into colour, aren't you? Generally. Certain amount, yes. Yeah. And I just, looking through your house, I noticed that you'd done, because I read that you went to stay with a license screen for Christmas and you, you knocked up for them uh, a big table, you found a big oak plank and then you found something to rest it on. Huge uh, oak tree trunks. Uh, trunks. Yeah, and then you found a plank to yeah. go on the top and then you did a faux marble top. And over there, we've got this bit of faux marbling. Uh, oh, I did done. that the other day for, to, to, help, to, for, to be a base for this wonderful monkey. So this is the... You are basically highly creative in making your own yeah, things. I it's love handicrafts. I, keep, I love a handicraft more than anything in the world. Like Min Hogg, she liked handicrafts. And I remember reading about your first study at Eton when you were probably 15 and um, that you had faux leopard curtains. Yeah. You had um, faux grass, which Actually, you got it was faux ermine. Faux ermine? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. And then you had a faux grass carpet yeah. which you got from a greengrocer or somewhere. Uh, from, the, from the barrow at Eton's at um, Belgrave Square. And yeah. then you made your palmets from... Cut out, card, very thick white card. To look like something ostrich feathers. Ostrich feathers. Yeah. So the whole thing was totally original. Yeah. Totally made. Well, by whether it was original, it was what I had saw what was seen in some mad decor on the on stage. Oh, you know. I see. Yeah. And then you brought it to life. Yeah, I, I just like that copy uh, thing. And then your housemaster was so impressed that he used to actually take people after entertain for dinner yeah. to show them your study. He used I to mean, bring them in. What, what did your peers think of this? It's a bit unusual. Most of them would have nudes, were they, on the wall or something? Oh, they're, I don't know. And they're flying ducks. <laughs> Peter Scott. <laughs> But, but you, you obviously didn't mind standing out, making your mark, showing your creativity. No, not yeah. the least. Um, and, and the, but you nearly then went into um, clothes design. You nearly well, I thought of it. Mm. But um, I mean, because a lot of my friends were young clothes designers. Yes. And I, I thought it'd be fun to do it, but <coughs> I didn't get very far. I did a few gas designs. I was turned down by the Central School of Art. Um, so then I went into, well, I worked in, at Vogue, and that, so that was a, another side of fashion. Yeah. I do but wonder if they hadn't turned you down, if we'd all be reading about the Nicky Haslam collection. Collection, yes, probably easily, yeah. Stuff. Yeah, quite easily. You could easily you'd have buy, You'd buy that. Nicky Haslam sunglasses and Nicky Haslam yes, bags perfect. and Nicky Haslam, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right, well, that's your next five yeah. years. Let's, let's crack that one, Nicky. And this is another example of your creativity. I, I mean, you dear, might think it's... Dear girl, that is, I did that sort of 1972, actually. But this is just a brick. Yeah. And it's a doorstop. You've just covered it with some <coughs> leopard material. Yeah. And it's just so effective. But the very fact that you've thought of it, done it for two and six months, and it's fun. Yeah. And that is the thing you do with your gardens, isn't it? They are original... They are fun. You love eBay like me, you're a bit yeah, of an addict. It's great. Um, put things together, make things up, and there you well, might... Using the, using the, not the exotic, but using the strange in gardens I quite like, the sort of things you wouldn't expect to be in a garden. So what is the strangest thing Well, I'd be like in putting in, 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 indoor furniture like that, those, those console tables. 
yeah. which I painted, which were, I think they were pale green when I got them, and I painted them that colour because it looks like steel. Because I read that when Louis XIV was building Versailles, he had the window frames painted that colour to look like steel because it was the latest, uh, latest hard surface to come in was steel came up for, for, for guns and um, arms. Oh, and I it was see. the latest fashion to have steel. I see. So, it's steel so are color. those really wood? No, no, they're they metal, are metal. metal yeah. They are metal, yeah. right. Yeah. But, I mean, brown furniture is so cheap now. Would you ever use well, any of that outside yes. and treat well, it? Well, perhaps not outside, but I would. Oh, I might. But I mean, brown furniture painted white looks wonderful. Yes. And painted but it Chippendale be, chair white and you're happy. Yeah, but it wouldn't be durable <coughs> outside. Most of it would be mahogany. I suppose mahogany would be durable outside. Yes, but also you get those paints that are completely durable to and permeable paints now, yeah. can't you? So and have you would peel that? them off. Have you no. done that? Have no, you got I've done no. it. But it would be good to do, because yeah. when you think of the price of garden furniture, it's yeah. astronomical, but you can pick up brown birch for the There are a pair of nothing. candlesticks under the table next door. Yes. That you go outside at night. Ah. Fast ones, fast wooden candlesticks. Lovely. So we should be more, we should move things Flexibility. in, out, out, in. Flexibility. That's a lovely idea. Absolutely yeah. most important thing. And putting trellis on your kitchen wall yeah. as well as outside, yeah. bringing a garden bench into your hall, yeah. all that sort of thing. Yeah. So that's fun, isn't it? And do you keep it moving? Do you like to change things and suddenly find something, keep it dynamic? Or yes, I, I do lazy? less. I used to a lot more change yeah. things. Um, now I'm getting lazy. Yeah. And I think, well, one day I'll change that and then one day I don't. <laughs> and which gardens have you had a hand in that, that um, we might recognise? That we Somebody might... called Johnny Allsop. I did a garden for in Hampshire, or I designed it. Um, yes. Um, which was very pretty. Johnny and Daryl Allsop. Who else have I done? I can't mind. So long since I did gardens. I mean, my mind's going. South of France, I did one for clients. Right. I mean, I said I did it. I suggested what it should look like and have a. You know, a focus point there, mm. or longest view possible. I mean, <coughs> I mean, often just getting the mood, <coughs> deciding on the mood and how you want the thing to look yeah. is important, isn't yeah. it? Because it's when people shilly shally around and a bit of this, bit of that, and a bit of the other that it really falls down. Exactly. But you have a strong feel to the garden. You have to get the space right, and then you decorate it from finding it from interesting sources. So it's individual and charismatic, exactly. a bit like yeah. yourself. <laughs> 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 right, no, it's, um, it, it really is a stunning space and it's lovely to see it and um, I'm hoping you're going to do your memoirs next, an update on your well, memoirs. Well, I keep thinking I w should and I may do one day but mm. other things to do in between. Yeah, you're a very busy man, aren't you? Reviewing uh, books, doing all sorts of things. A lot of, lot of writing, yes. And but still doing interior designing. A little bit, not, not a lot anymore. I, can't, I don't want to travel, I turn, just turned down a job in New Orleans, clients I've done four houses for. Yes. <coughs> but I can't really travel that far. Right. I it's bet they're disappointed. Well, they're so old, they've probably forgotten they asked me. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> I love it. And have you ever done anything you thought, my God, I shouldn't have done that? Have you made any... Because you're always pushing the boundaries. We did, I did a lot of Russians. I did all the oligarchs. I did Bramovich, um, Deripaska, Arvum. Goldberg, I mean, all the great oligarchs. But I did one who had a huge hideous apartment in Moscow. Yes. And it was it, it was of a horror. What the, the whole every floor was on a different level to be used as a sort of showroom. Yeah. <coughs> Sorry. Um, it had been used as a, as a kind of showroom, but every floor, awful inlaid floors, and it was vast. And I did things. I thought, well, it's so ugly, I can't make it worse. And we did sofas 18 miles long, and I did a whole room in fringe on the walls. 18 miles, I mean, 20 metres of fringe on the wall. What sort of fringe? Like really deep yeah, fringe? Yeah, deep fringe. Would you, you wouldn't normally do fringe. Well, I, actually, I've, done, I've done it in London since, it looks wonderful. Uh. But um, we did, we did, I mean, it was terrible as a part, but I thought, well, luckily nobody will ever see it. Bloody hell, it won a prize as the best room. <laughs> And then everyone sees that's what you do. Yeah. Oh dear, oh dear. Oh, well, he obviously liked it. You satisfied the client. Yes. 
But that, it, it, do you not go by the, the maxim then that the client is always right? And even if you do something that you no, think is that, hideous, as long right. as he likes it, you're happy? No. You don't agree? The room speaks, the client speaks, and I speak, and I win. Right. right. Rooms do speak. Mm. Rooms tell you what to do. Yeah, yeah. You take your. And I think and land tells you what to do. Oh, definitely. The garden. You, know, you must have that all the time. Yeah, all the time. Yes. There's a, a vo there's a voice in nature. Mm. There's a voice in buildings that mm. says, "Don't do that to me. Don't hang a picture there. It's not going to be right." Yeah, I I always think it's more with the landscape because the landscape is so there and molded. Um, I think. The well, no, you can you can mold a landscape to your own desires, buddy. You, but they're na the natural beauty of the landscape. So here, it's so obvious, isn't suppose it? it was, suppose beauty. it was a gravel pit. You could make that look Oh, wonderful. then you can make it. Yeah, we've done gravel pits. <laughs> yes, we've done them, made them into all sorts of things. Yeah. And they're lovely because you've got carte blanche yeah. often, haven't you? And then yeah. it's totally different, apart from the fact you've got to work with the soil or whatever. Yeah. But yes, no, then you can do anything. But when you've got a historic landscape or you've got a you know, beautiful buildings listed and all this sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. It, it, you're more obviously you follow in that vein. But no, this is idyllic and the summer's coming and you're Isn't busy it wonderful? writing yeah, yeah. and designing and everything. But thank you very much for showing us. And it was lovely you came and I'm great honour to have you in this house. Thank you. <laughs> you are so kind. <laughs>